I love photorealism in games. So I decided to add photorealism into my game. But let's start at the beginning. In the last episode I added some post-processing and made the nature look way better. And that was the point where everything changed. More and more people came to me and wanted to help with making the game. We are here to help. So that was the point where I decided, should I make a company? So I did exactly that. And that is how Overload Studios was born. Now that I have less time to 3D model, delete 12 seconds later. Now add a new cube in Blender. And I have more time to focus on graphics and physics. I could finally go all out with the graphics. First, I let the post processing not have all the work and added some reflections and ray tracing. And then I made more realistic materials and added some cracks and some spill paint by using decals. Obviously, this is only my own experience with hyperrealism. You may find a different or even better solution. Now that I've got the team and the hyperrealism I wanted, I could finally have a nice clip to post on social media. So the editor got to work and made us this clip. I really like how the music kind of interacts with the video. Still, it's not the finished look I want because there are some jitters and textures and stuff. And in the city, it doesn't look as realistic as it does in the garage. Instead of first working further and further into the topic of hyperrealism, I wanted to first wrap this topic up and switch to a different topic, in this case interior mapping. Interior mapping is basically faking interior by using your vmaps and the camera position. And because you don't need to render a 3D object every frame and instead render a 2D texture every frame, it just makes the performance way better. Then I decided why not work on the UI and that was a major mistake because it took two months. So after working on that for two months, I finally got out a nice UI, which is responsive, has selectable menu options with custom settings, low, medium and high settings. We have more options than ever. We have post-processing, real-time reflections, etc. And which I'm really proud of and worked a lot of time on is the general look of it. it it's it just feels nice. It feels like it's integrated into the game. And then after watching a couple of YouTube videos and researched on what makes racing games feel fast or feel fun, I learned sound is one of the most important things, except FOV, from racing games. So I mixed the throttle control with the engine RPM and mixed that together to get the nice engine sound we have now. This is how it sounded before. And this is how it sounds after the engine update. There is so much to do. I still want to work on the garage and the workshop so you can customize your car. And I want to add ramps, police, speed cameras, just overall stuff that makes the game feel much more alive, fun to play and has replayability. If you want to help us make the game, join our Discord in the description. You can even play test it if you want. That said, have a great day and don't forget to subscribe.